Well, hello again. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is another in our series of hopefully educational webinars about certain aspects of the concrete construction industry with a little bit of a focus on concrete maturity. Uh, I know a lot of us are working from home uh, or at least are, are not out in the field and we thought that this would be a good time for some knowledge transfer, hoping everybody is staying safe. Um, this is intended to be an educational series. They are not designed to be sales pitches. Uh, I am very enthusiastic about the extraordinarily compelling ways that maturity benefits precasters. So this, uh, this particular webinar may have a more of a sales pitchy sound to it, but that's just because I'm so convinced of the benefits for mature for uh, precast. Uh, a little bit of background, been in the business about 20 years. I'm on a couple of influential committees at ACI and ASTM, including the committee that writes the standard for maturity itself. I hope that my experience in this emerging field is helpful to all of you watching today. The format is basically PowerPoints and some photos of testing at real precast plants. It should take about 30 minutes. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the uh, Ask Questions button on the website. Or also, if you're watching on YouTube, you can ask questions. Uh, I'll be monitoring. Somebody's going to be monitoring this live, uh, so we can hopefully help you out uh, in real time. Um, I do respond to every uh, email that I get directly, so those do, do come directly to me. So. Um, without further ado, uh, we'll get started on how maturity is transforming the entire precast concrete industry. And I know uh, it seems like a pretty, uh, pretty bold statement to make, but it is, it, this is something that is uh, uh, really important for precast. And it is something that I consider to be extraordinarily simple, and it's extremely cost effective. And it improves quality control, it cut costs, cuts costs, and it optimizes operations at any precast plant. And this can happen literally overnight. So I'm, I'm a very big proponent of it. Uh, I've been working with precasters for many years. And every precaster that is using at least our system had, really has some tremendous benefit from it. So this uh, webinar is going to go over these basic main topics. Um, why do I think that it is so easy to implement maturity for a precast producer? Uh, what are the benefits for precast producers to use maturity as a part of their overall quality control process? How can precasters implement maturity at their plant? Just basically, how is this done? Um, how do we provide verifiable proof about the test results themselves? Uh, and then how much does it cost? I give, I'll give you a pretty good uh, overview of the different types of systems that are out there. Um, and then what is the return on investment metrics for a typical precast plant? Because that's something that every uh, knowledgeable precaster should be asking. The one thing to keep in mind, and I hope that this is the takeaway, is that maturity, doing maturity at a precast plant is a true win, win, win for any precast producer. It, they will cut costs, which is a net benefit for the producer. They will improve the product, which is a net benefit for, po for both the, the producer and the owners of those products. And they will save time, which is labor and money. So it really is win-win all the way around. So the first subject is, why do I think it is so easy to implement maturity at a precast plant? Um, a uh, couple reasons, really big reasons. First of all, precasters have optimal conditions for accurate maturity estimations. The quality of the ready mix concrete product is better because there's no transit time. It's easier to batch it. They're batched in smaller batches, and it's, you have extremely tightly controlled curing conditions, unlike cast in place concrete. They would be very jealous of the conditions that you guys uh, cure your concrete in. Um, High temperature curing typically leads to very rapid strength gain. So you have a lot of benefits uh, that, that accrue from adding extra heat to the, to the mix. Um, however, and this, this goes to maturity, so anybody that has a question about the specifics of concrete maturity and maturity testing should ask me these questions uh, either now or later. But TTF, which is a maturity function, is not as accurate for precast. 
And it's something that I've heard from precasters um, where they have uh, commented that they weren't uh, real sure about maturity. But the bottom line is that, that the reason that they weren't so sure about it is because it, they were using the wrong method. The equivalent age function is much better. It is less well known in the industry, but it is the best way to do it. And that's what we use exclusively at precast plants. And just to give you some idea, these are these are some pictures of, of um, it happens to be our system in use at pretty large precast plants with long beds. Uh, and, and you can actually see here where um, you have uh, the, uh, you have a, one of our devices, it's got actually a sensor down in a cylinder, down in this box there are some cylinders, and then they've also got sensors that are leading up to the piece. So you're really monitoring three different things at once there. Um, there's a situation where the sensor's down inside the concrete, and then here's a, a, a pad that's about to be placed, and they've got a couple of nodes down there that's about to monitor that concrete there. It's pretty easy. It's uh, really just a sensor that goes down in the concrete. Um, the uh, quality control test cylinders are typically cured right alongside the bed. It's easier to it's e very easy to monitor those and to compare the strengths between the cylinders and uh, and the bed, and also the strengths of the cylinders for maturity, which is called validation. Um, the, the cylinders typically lag quite a bit behind the bed strength, but this can vary. Sometimes the cylinders are actually higher in strength than the bed, and that just depends on the curing conditions. Um, there are also times when you can match cure the cylinders. Uh, you, if you cure them in a match cured environment, um, you're either doing that with these uh, cumbersome heated test cylinder molds, or you can do them in a match curing tank. Match curing is great, but with maturity, it is not required. So it, uh, match curing can actually validate maturity, but you can also just do maturity without uh, doing match curing. Uh, another, another couple pictures here. Here's what we were talking about earlier. The, se the sensor is down inside the cylinder. And then there's also a sensor that's down inside the piece, and then they're going to actually use that cylinder uh, or, or a companion cylinder to it to compare the strengths later on. Uh, again, you've got some some sensors that are that are, are a sensor that is monitoring uh, this set of cylinders here. Uh, there's one of our match cure boxes. So this is this set over here is showing a little bit of match curing. These are the uh, uh, the heated uh, test cylinder molds that are common in a lot of precast plants. Here's this uh, down over here in the right hand corner is um, some test cylinders that we were uh, curing for a maturity curve at a high temperature, very elevated temperature. That temperature, that water bath was about 105 degrees. It was kind of like a little hot tub for the cylinders. And then we also have a situation here. This is a bed that is about to get um, blanketed by uh, some by a big tarp. Uh, they're going to have steam running through uh, underneath here. And they also have all the, their QC cylinders are cured right alongside the bed there. So we've got actually one sensor that's going to go inside the bed itself and one sensor inside the cylinder all at the same time. And here's another um, uh, situation where we've got a cylinder that's actually down inside uh, the, the cast concrete itself. This was a, uh, a hollow core uh, example. And it's pretty uh, pretty interesting the way they the way they dug out a hole for the their test cylinders just to make sure that they were cured at the right at the right uh, uh, temperature. So the benefits for precasters to do maturity to implement maturity at their plants there are so many benefits. Um, uh, it it saves an enormous amount of energy on uh, on heating. Um, uh, bottom line is that I've got people, I've, I've, I have customers who have invested in large maturity systems based on just merely saving heat. They can turn off their um, heaters a couple hours early. Uh, they've, they've justified the cost of, of a large system. Uh, so just if you can turn your heaters off that much sooner, that'll, that'll save money on energy. You can save time and labor every single day by requiring a lot, many fewer test cylinders to be made. And uh, that inc includes all the costs for uh, making them, curing them, storing them, and obviously breaking them and record it and recording all of that data. And then you, a huge benefit of maturity for precast is optimizing mix designs. If you can optimize your mix designs around bed strengths, 
rather than cylinder strengths, you can save tons on cement because in precast, almost every single mix design is over designed because their goal is to flip their beds faster. And they use a lot of cement to do that. And you can, you, when you find out that your, con that your bed reached strength four hours or five hours earlier than your cylinders did, that means that you're actually over designing that mix by a lot. I know um, I've seen situations where um, concrete strand has been detensioned too soon because they were testing the cylinders and the cylinders were higher than the actual in place concrete and that's very dangerous. Um, they do have a lot of safety uh, uh, factors in place at precast plants to prevent injury, but still it's something that you should always try to not do and that's detention too soon. Um, you can key in on quality control issues with the concrete almost instantly, which will improve quality control overall. You're going to find out sooner, much faster, that you, have, you might have a problem with your concrete, which of course is going to reduce the chance of failures and reworking pieces and all that kind of stuff. Um, you will uh, potentially and, and quite often reduce waiting times, which will improve uh, productivity you get to flip your beds faster. Re reducing waiting times is important when you have when you want to try to possibly do two to three pours a day on a, on a particular bed. And I had one customer, I, I mean, I put this in here about reducing waste by never stripping too soon. I had one customer where they, um, they were pouring uh, uh, jersey barriers and they really didn't have any idea what the strength of those pieces were. Uh, they're pretty small. Um, it was pretty cold. They really didn't have a lot of good, adequate heat on them, and they really stripped too soon. And they they were wasting about 10% of the jersey barriers that they cast. 10% waste. That is, that is ridiculous. So all they had to do is put a sensor into into the last one they placed, and it'll tell them exactly what the strength of that concrete is. And so they don't ever strip too soon. So I know I'm going really fast. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you can rewatch these later um, uh, it, on our website, uh, but I want to try to cover a lot of material, and uh, so that's that's why I'm going so fast. So this is this is the how-to section. Okay, how do we do this? It is so easy. So precasters on one on the one hand, precasters already have all the tools to leverage the benefits of maturity. You have the people to make cylinders. You have uh, the technicians who know how to do it correctly. You have the facilities to cure and store those cylinders correctly. You have the brake machines. You have all of the knowledge that you need. Contractors out in the field don't. You guys already do. So the first thing, that, so you really have everything in place, all of the tools ready to go to, to implement maturity on the, in the best possible way. So the first thing that you do is you're going to create a maturity curve from the mix that you use a lot. Ultimately, you're going to create a mix from every mix you use. But I'm just trying to get you started here. So pick a mix that you use a lot, and you're going to do this at an elevated temperature to mimic as, uh, roughly how the concrete in the beds is being cured. Um, so these are not uh, lab-cured cylinders. They're cured in the lab, but they're going to be cured at an elevated temperature. So at the same time, you're going to put a couple sensors in your beds, and you're going to monitor the temperature of your beds. You're probably already doing that, uh, something like this anyway. If you're not, you should be. Um, but you're going to use that information to estimate the strength of your beds at any time. So you're really going to be doing this uh, at the exact same time. You're creating the curve, and then you're going to you're going to do some estimating of the strengths at the same time. Just to give you some idea, here's some some pictures. You know, you've got. Uh, one of our devices, it's got a sensor down in the cylinder, it's got a sensor up in the bed, um, and then we were also making a maturity curve on the same day that we were doing all of this. Um, here's a, a real simple picture of one of our sensors that's down in a, in a piece that's attached to one of our devices. Um, here's an older picture down on the bottom here of uh, some of our uh, earlier wireless devices that were a really long ways away from the lab, and that was a pretty cool thing because that was about a quarter mile walk for them to, to go get the, the readers that they had 
and uh, this, this wireless system was better for them. Um, in this particular case, this is just a simple uh, monitoring the cylinders at the same time that we're casting them. And then here's a, a cure bath uh, where we can monitor the cylinders and make sure that we're doing everything right that way. So you also embed a sensor in a QC cylinder, and you, you're, you're going to cure those uh, QC cylinders the same way you normally do, whether you're curing them right alongside the bed, under the tarps, in a cure box, however you cure them. Then once you've established this maturity curve, and I'm skipping over a lot here, but call me if you have any questions about how to do this. But you're going to uh, you're going to create this curve, and you're going to estimate the strength of both the bed and the test cylinders at the same time. And remember, they don't need to match. In fact, they almost certainly won't. And then what you're going to do is you're simply going to break some cylinders at that time, at the time you did the maturity test, and you compare that crushing strength to the estimated strength that you did by maturity. Um, so you're, you're sort of comparing apples to apples to apples. Everything, everything should match up. Here's, a, here's an image of uh, what comes out of our software. And uh, just to give you some idea, this was a, this was a test cylinder. This, this middle graph here is the strength of a test cylinder at a certain uh, time. It's actually, it was about a half day, uh, one half of a day. So the equivalent age on that was 18 hours. Um, in other words, the, the cylinder was actually gained strength that, uh, faster than the cylinders did at the laboratory at 73 degrees. So, in other words, the concrete's gaining strength relatively quickly. The actual leg of this piece, whatever this what this piece was, I think it was a, a double T, the leg was a much higher strength. So, at the exact same time, at the exact same age, it had a strength of 4,100 PSI, and, and the cylinder was only at 2,700. The th much thinner section of this precast piece, which was called a flange, was only 2,200 psi. And what should concern a lot of people here is that this is this concrete right here is lower in strength than the test cylinder that this is representing. So it's just to give you some idea of of the importance of doing this properly and understanding what this data is telling you. If you just broke that test cylinder and you got 2,700 PSI, you would think that your concrete was 2,700 and it's not. So what you can see here is that the leg uh, has a strength of 4,136 PSI. It has uh, roughly an equivalent age of 28 hours, even though the actual age is only 50, uh, half, about half a day. And then when you compare that to the cylinder at 2,700 PSI, it has an equivalent age of 18 hours, and the flange itself is only about 14 hours, which is about right given given the temperature of the curing. Uh, but this is something that this is something that comes out of our software, and it's pretty easy for um, precasters to to see. And and so uh, again, going back to um, how this is done in the field, uh, as long as when you break the cylinders. Um, uh, and and you look at the maturity of those cylinders, as, if they are within 10% of each other, then the curve is considered valid. So you're using the maturity system to predict the strength of the cylinders at the time you break them and comparing those values. Um, and, uh, and so at that point, that's per ASTM, as long as they're within 10%, that they, you can now rely on the maturity estimate of the bed the sensor that's inside the bed to assume that that strength estimate is accurate. If they are not close, then you likely have a quality control issue with your concrete from that day's operations. And you should investigate the possible causes. And in fact, this is just basic common sense. And it is the kind of data as a precaster you should want to know sooner rather than later. In other words, if you're breaking cylinders and the maturity of the cylinders says you should have, let's say, 3,000 PSI, but you break your cylinders and they're only 2,000, you have a potentially big problem on your hands. 
So this, this concept is known as validation or verification. This is how we verify the proof of what I'm talking about, about these test results about maturity. So, so the, the fact that we're using the, the cylinders to validate the maturity curve is, is, is a process called validation. And, um, and uh, remember that batching, concrete batching, varies from day to day, which is why there's an allowable 10% variation. However, our customers, using the protocols that we have established regarding the creation of accurate maturity calibration curves, our clients find that their variation is almost always below 5%. And we have some clients who report their data to us, and we've seen most of their data come in under 3% of the actual crushing strength. So bottom line is that um, this is really an astounding fact considering that maturity is designed for use in a mass, not in a test cylinder. So if we're able to predict the strength of test cylinders to within 3% of their actual strength, you can darn well rely on that for determining your um, uh, bed strength. So there's, so not only can you use maturity in this way, you can also use what's called match curing. Now, a lot of precasters know what match curing is. Um, match curing is where you're going to cure a test sample in an identical fashion to the piece that you are ca that you cast. Uh, it's identical in temperature and time. Therefore, it's identical in maturity, and they should match exactly. Um, and and uh, it is usually typically accomplished using either special cylinder molds that are coupled to these complex control systems that are installed at the plant. There are wires run directly from the bed back to the control unit, and then there are wires run from the control unit directly to each one of these special cylinder molds. Or you could use something a little more modern that is a, a, a wa circulating water-based wireless cure box. So it's, it's called TrueMatch. But regardless of the type of the equipment that you use, maturity can be used easily and simply to verify and validate the match cure test results. I, I know that sounds kind of crazy. You would think that match curing would be better, but for example, as long as you use maturity and your estimates of those cylinder breaks, regardless of the method you used, uh, line up, then your quality control is good. In other words, the maturity curve matches the day's production of that concrete and you broke your cylinders and the cylinder breaks matched then everything's good however if your test results do not line up with the maturity estimates you really should investigate the cause now concrete varies and this method quickly identifies when that variance is unacceptable for structural reasons this is exactly what every producer should want to know and it is what every owner so for example dot's engineers should demand. A couple photographs. This happens to be uh, a, a series of, there's a whole bunch of the uh, heated cylinder molds. Um, they require uh, cleaning every day, oiling up every day. There's a, there's a process to them and they, they have to be plugged into a control box in order to uh, heat up. Uh, they actually don't cool down. All they do is heat up um, if your concrete in the field drops in temperature, the, these will retain the heat. So there's, that's one of the little quirks to them. And then this is actually down here, a true match box. There's, inside there is a water circulating uh, control unit here, and this sets the temperature inside the cure box to the temperature inside the bed. That's called match cure. So about how much does it cost? to implement maturity. Well, that varies from type uh, the, the different types of systems. And I'm not going to talk about match curing at this point. I'm only talking about maturity. The, and, and actually, I'm talking about the simplest form of maturity, which is just simply putting sensors inside the bed, uh, putting sensors inside cylinders as well to, for validation, and creating a maturity curve. And, and double checking it. So that's really all we're talking about here. So there are three three basic types. There's an older type, which is uh, a thermocouple wire uh, hooked up to a data logger. Uh, you have to collect the data manually 
and you have to actually run all of the maturity calculations manually. Um, that people do it, uh, you know, that's people, people are doing it today. There are companies out there that make uh, sacrificial loggers. These are embedded loggers. Uh, they do require manual data retrieval, uh, but the maturity calculations are typically automated and they typically use TTF. In fact, I'm almost positive all of them do. And then uh, there's reusable sensors with wireless data loggers, which is the easiest to implement because it's, uh, it's wireless. You don't have to go collect the data. Uh, truly automated text and email alerts for strengths and temperatures. Um, and it's all, it has built in uh, single click uh, reporting and um, no cost to go out and collect the data. And as a matter of fact, it's cloud-based so you can see your data from anywhere. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about each one of these systems, kind of the pros and the cons of each one. So um, the, the thermocouple type, uh, is uh, typically just thermocouple wire, a data logger, and you have to physically go out and collect the data off of the logger uh, every day. Uh, the cost for the equipment is relatively low, but the cost to implement it properly is quite a bit higher. If you're trying to do true maturity, you're going to spend a lot more time implementing maturity using uh, one of these types of systems. Um, you would have to have a fairly knowledgeable user due to the completely manual process. And you could, you know, maturity is a public domain process. You could um, put together an Excel spreadsheet uh, to do this, but again, it would be a pretty manual process. The sacrificial logger-based systems that are out there, um, what they have is they have these embedded, uh, they're actually embedded sensors um, they have these loggers that get attached to the sensors, and the loggers themselves can only uh, uh, be used a certain number of times before the, either their batteries run out or their data is full or something. Um, again, very manual data retrieval. You have to go collect the, the data manually using a handheld reader. Um, however, the maturity calculations do get calculated for you automatically. Now, you do have to collect the data and then bring it back to a computer in order to read it. Um, so there's that. There's that step. Um, so the reuse, or these are typically non-reusable loggers. The, the sensors themselves can be anywhere. I've heard pricing anywhere from $8 to $12 a piece. And then uh, the loggers themselves are... I want to say about $20 a piece, or, or I'm sorry, maybe about $75 a piece. Uh, that's what I, yeah, I think it's about $75 a piece. But those last a while, so you get to use those uh, several times. But you also need the readers. Um, I have had uh, some clients who have calculated their um, uh, cost per year in, in the $100,000 to $200,000 range, and that's just for consumables. Uh, that was at a very large precast plant doing a lot of testing, so obviously, uh, but it, it can get up to that. It can be pretty expensive, especially when you're just talking about consumables. Um, it does not factor in, now that cost did not factor in the labor cost of merely obtaining the data every day from the loggers at the beds to determine the current strength. And imagine if the current strength wasn't sufficient uh, the first time, and you have to go out and read them again, that doubles your cost. So. The labor costs alone on this could easily surpass the consumables with a type of system like this. And then the, the, a newer type of system on the market is a system with wireless data loggers where it sends the data up to the cloud. It's uh, uh, the Internet of Things type of uh, equipment. Um, and they also have reusable sensors. Uh, and I've done some analysis of this. It truly is the lowest total cost of ownership of any true maturity system. It is di designed from the ground up to be a maturity system because of the reusable sensors and the zero cost of data retrieval. You just don't have to go get the data. The data shows up on your, on your browser. Um, it's super easy to implement this uh, due to the automated system design. Um, you get automatic uh, or automated uh, text or email alerts for strengths, so you'll always know when your concrete is up to strength. You can, it, it saves a lot of time uh, creating reports for owners uh, because the reports are um, uh, one click. And as I said earlier, the, the data is viewable from a web browser. 
So uh, it's highly collaborative. Um, here's a couple pictures of some of our device, devices out in the field. Um, there's a device where it's got one sensor that's, uh, that's in the bed, maybe two sensors in the bed. You got one sensor that's sitting here in a cylinder. And I, can, I don't know if you can see this, but there's another wire going down inside this cure box here because we were comparing the temperature inside this insulated cure box to the cylinder temperature here and then the bed temperature. And there's a close-up view of one of the sensors in one of the, the tubing so you can get the sensor back out. Uh, again, here's another um, uh, image down here where the, you can really see that tubing. And this is going down inside, uh, uh, and, and it's actually taped alongside a strand. So it's pretty pretty simple to use. That's the newer newer style. The cost for this uh, type of system range from about two thousand dollars up to maybe a maximum of about twenty thousand dollars. So you know, even a huge plant with say uh, twenty operational beds would really only need about twenty thousand dollars worth of equipment. So Perhaps a bit more if all of the beds are being poured every single day, but that rarely happens at precast plants. Typically, they they have some beds poured one day and then the other beds are being prepped the next. So, um, so here's uh, in, in when I look at a comparison between the cost of each system and the benefits of each type of system, uh, what we're going to do is I want to take a look at a total cost of ownership analysis, and, and I and I did this specifically for this webinar, and I tried to take uh, uh, some, some relatively standard industry uh, cost figures, um, and, and, I, and you guys can apply your own cost figures to this, but uh, I, I think this is actually pretty good, but I, it's pretty, pretty eye-opening. Um, and so what, what I did is I assumed an average size precast plant, which is say eight to 10 beds, um, four beds being poured per day, uh, and you need, and this is assuming that uh, they need less than 24 hours to reach their uh, stripping or release strengths. Um, we're going to make a few assumptions on this, and all, for all three types of systems, so four beds tested per day, one location per bed. You can obviously test more locations if you want to. With uh, with our system, that wouldn't increase your cost tremendously because our system has three ports on each node. Other, the other systems, the cost would go up accordingly. Um, I, I, what I did is I took a grand total of a thousand total tests, meaning actual testing locations, which is about one year's worth of testing at this particular precast plant if they're working 250 days a year. I assumed a labor rate of $30 an hour. I don't know if that's high or low, but just assuming an, a labor rate for a technician of about 30 bucks an hour. So. Here is a, let's, let's take a look at some of the costs. So um, this is, uh, there's a lot on here. Uh, if you have any questions and you want to study this a little more, um, uh, you can email me, <laughs> I can send it to you, uh, or you can come back later and just uh, freeze frame this spot. Um, but uh, I'll go over it a little bit with, with, with you just to, just to get an idea. So the older style with the thermocouples and uh, and what I call the uh, the Amazon data loggers, that's just simple data loggers that you can buy from a lot of different sources. Uh, they're, all they are are temperature data loggers that use thermocouple wire. Thermocouple wire is about a dollar a foot. You've got to buy 500 to 1,000 feet uh, at a time. Um, the loggers themselves uh, range in price, uh, an average maybe of about $200. And I'm going to assume about 30 loggers to account for breakage and damage uh, throughout the year. So that's, a, that's probably a, a reasonable amount of loggers for a precast plant because they're not terribly rugged. So let's say $6,000 for loggers, $1,000 for thermocouple while, grand total of about $7,000 for the initial startup cost for this, this style right here. The sacrificial thermistors with the loggers and readers, which is, and again, this is a true maturity system, they are, I'm going to assume about $10 each. Um, you would need about 1,000 of them, so that's uh, $10,000 total. You're going to need at least 20 of these limited-use loggers. And again, once these are gone, these are consumed. This is all gone. Um, but those are about $75 a piece, so $1,500. And you're going to need uh, at least one reader 
and then typically you're going to want to have at least one backup in case it, uh, one breaks. So that would be a grand total of about $14,500 to get started with a system like this, and that's just the equipment. And then uh, the same capacity or same capability system for Concure would be um, a starter kit, which is one node, plus three additional nodes at uh, $1,800 a piece, plus a grand total, grand total with, for all, everything here of 50 sensors because they're reusable. And this is assuming that there will be some breakage, of course. Grand total of about $8,400. So if you looked at just the equipment for 1,000 tests, you got the, the, the real old manual style of $7 a test. You've got uh, the sacrificial system, which is $1,450 a test. And then you've got the high-end uh, 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 data logging system where you don't have to go collect the data, the, the IoT-based, cloud-based system, for $8.40 a test. However, it really gets interesting when you start to add labor costs. So again, uh, this, this can vary quite a bit depending on the labor rates, but let's assume that it takes a technician about two hours a day to collect all of the data from all of these loggers and that would be about right because they, if they're placing that many loggers, it's going to take them a couple hours to collect all that data. So uh, $60 a day, $15,000 a year is just labor to collect all of the data. It's the same here because the, the, the user has to go up to each individual logger and download it, and then they also have to um, uh, do more with that data later. So again, that cost is the same. For this system over here, because the data is sent to the cloud automatically, there's no there's no data cost to obtaining the data. However, I added in some time for uh, somebody going out to retrieve the sensors, store them, and then every once in a while they have to change the batteries in the in the nodes. So I rounded up to about twenty five hundred dollars a year for labor for that. Um, the uh, the labor for reporting and calculating maturity, um, again, completely manual system assumes about two hours per day. So really, this, this person over here is spending about half their day doing nothing but data collecting and calculating strengths and, and uh, hoping that's, uh, uh, maybe that's too high. I, I, I guess I, maybe it is, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's within the realm of possibility. Uh, now, this system is a little easier because all you have to do is upload the data to a PC and um, uh, it does calculate the maturity for you, but you still have to do all the reporting. There's a, it's a bit more manual than, than this system. And this system is the net, it's a negligible cost for reporting simply because the reports are auto-generated. So the labor to, to, uh, cost for a thousand tests is about $30 per test. Uh, with the oldest style system. The, the sacrificial system would be about $22 per test. And then uh, our system would, if we round it up a lot to $3.60 per test, you get a grand total, uh, total equipment plus labor cost for the first year um, of uh, $37,000. Ironically, these two ended up being about the same. So there's no, even if you think you're, there's, there's some economy here of using uh, cheaper data loggers and cheaper thermocouples. There really, there really isn't when it comes down to it, just because of the extra labor that's involved here. However, uh, the labor savings really made a difference uh, in the cost per test uh, for, uh, for our system. However, remember one thing about that. The total cost of ownership numbers that we just talked about are the cost per test for just the first year. OK, that's that's uh, that's just one year. And if we extend that further by adding test cylinders, because we really want to do we want to monitor test cylinders as well. We want to monitor one per bed per day for validation. So then the cost you have to add the you have to add supplies and labor to each one of these other systems um, for all of them, actually. So the thermocouple-based system, you add $4 for the thermocouples and another $30 for the labor. Total extra cost of about $8,500. So you're now looking at about $45,000 of cost to 
uh, run a temperature monitoring slash maturity system. The consumable-based uh, thermistor system, your, the supplies are quite a bit higher, the labor's a little cheaper, but that raises the total cost up to $52,000 a year. Whereas if you have a reusable sensor system with the cloud-based data, there's zero extra dollars for supplies because the sensors are reusable, and there's only about a $3 extra charge. <laughs> We're being a little generous here. $3 for uh, labor for uh, looking at those test cylinders. So your new extra cost is about $900 a year or $12,900. So there's a giant difference in total cost of ownership for the first year. And remember, remember that this system, you get everything back again. So the economy of scale really makes sense after the first year. So with the reusable sensor system, there are no extra costs. There is a non nominal data plan cost that is that you have to pay uh, per year, um, uh, but it's nominal. Because the, but anyway, the, the entire system is fully reusable. And with all the other systems, you're always going to be looking for consumables to purchase. Now, that's total cost of ownership. But what about the return on investment? So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. But let's assume that you're, you are going to look at buying $10,000 worth of equipment and you want to train your people. So $10,000 worth of equipment and training for your personnel to get going to do maturity and know how to do it. Now you can spend quite a bit less to do this, absolutely. But that would be a really good number to use. Okay, and that, was, that would also be a pretty big system. So if we use that figure, th think about this, calculate the return on investment. We need to know the following metrics. We need to know what your average energy cost is. We need to know how much it costs to um, heat your product per hour. Uh, the average precaster who steam cures their product saves about $4 of steam a night based on maturity data alone. Because they find out that they can turn their boilers off four hours earlier than they used to. This is, uh, I've, I've seen this many, many times. Um, Steam is one type of heat. There's electric heat. There's all sorts of different types of heat. But if you're heating your product, uh, maturity will pay for itself very, very quickly. Um, what is your cost for cement per ton? How many tons of cement do you consume in a year? How many cubic yards of concrete do you place per year? The average precaster can lean out their mixes by, and this is very, being very conservative, a minimum of $10 a yard through simple mix design optimization around bed strength and not around cylinder strength. And it's probably much greater than $10 per yard, but I'm trying to do very easy to understand, very small numbers. How many test cylinders does your lab take every day? How much does it cost you to cast one, cast one cylinder, and that includes labor, materials, storing them, curing them, testing, breaking, reporting, and all that kind of stuff, okay? The, the typical precaster is going to use fewer, 50 to 60% fewer cylinders over the course of a year. They're not going to make those because they don't need to because they don't have to make extra cylinders in case their early cylinders don't come up to strength because they'll never break a cylinder until they know that cylinder has reached strength. How often do, you, do your test cylinders fail to reach the target strength in the morning uh, due to uh, issues that could be completely unrelated to the bed curing correctly. So what, hap what happens if the, the, the heaters go out? What happens? How, how long do you then wait before breaking additional cylinders? What is the opportunity cost of that waiting time? Um, how long will it take for this QC cylinder to reach strength? Sorry, I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, so, and then the last, the last ROI point is what is the, uh, uh, how much breakage or waste does your plant experience because of damage caused by stripping forms when the concrete was still too green? Or worse, blowing out tendons because they were detentioned too soon. So those are, well, there's, those are some big numbers that you could be looking at that you should use to evaluate the, the return on investment for any kind of a maturity system. So 
Only the individual precaster knows or should know the metrics that I just mentioned. But there's one thing for sure. It is abundantly clear that saving some or all of those costs, even marginally, on an ongoing basis, will more than pay for implementing a $10,000 maturity system many times over in just the first year, and maybe even in just weeks. I've seen it. I've actually seen it. So, so this, to wrap up, yeah, this webinar might have been a little more sales pitchy than the others, but this is a subject that I really believe requires the, uh, some eyes to be opened to the ridiculously low cost and enormous benefits that making a move to buying uh, buying some state-of-the-art equipment can have. Okay, um, there's never been a time to upgrade your plant to include uh, this uh, brand new wireless IoT technology that is both rugged and reusable. And uh, I can't stress enough how implementing maturity now to take full advantage uh, uh, of all the benefits once you get back to normal will pay benefits to you. Um, if you're skeptical about any of this, please email me. I will give you the names of plant managers and QC directors all across the country who will vouch for every word that I have said here. So I thank you very, very much for your time. Uh, I hope that I have shown you or demonstrated how maturity can transform the entire precast concrete industry and, uh, and shown a little bit of the, the benefits of doing it. And uh, here's my contact information. I sincerely appreciate all of your time. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.